Hello everybody, Darren here and welcome back to episode 73 in my second Let's Play series for Anno 1800. In the last episode we did a little bit more building on the island of Rush and then got back to work stabilizing the trade routes of my horribly inefficient economy. Today we're going to be putting more strain on that economy as we look to build six new department stores here on Swords with the aim of filling up the Skyline Tower. Now, before we get into the episode, I've been a busy boy in between them, as per usual, doing a little bit of building, but this time in a place you might not have expected. It's the Island of Lusk. Of course, I've got a little time lapse for you, and I'll explain everything that's happening during that. Let's begin. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we are on the factory island of Lusk, the probably the main production island for about 70% of the game, I would say, and certainly the dominant production island in the old world. Now, in the previous episode, we had just built out this sort of artisan workshop and assembly line sort of district, if you will, surrounded by that trade union over there. But I had to bend the railway around, and I, I knew it looked ugly at the time, but sometimes, as you'll see in this episode, I have a, have a goal in mind. I need to get something done. I've got a timer saying how long the episode is tracking on for, and I want to get things done by the end, and then we'll fix the problems either in between or fix them later. And this is one of the in-between situations. So it's like, okay, I put down the buildings. You know that they work, and now we're going to just, like, tuck them in, make them a bit more neat. And that's what I've done over there. Now, while I was on the island, I thought, hey, why not just have a little look around and things we could maybe clean up a little bit? So it, it's difficult to really beautify this island. It is a production island after all. There's not many ornaments you can really fit with like big factories and stuff. If you really wanted to go all in on beauty building with factories, what you'd have to do is really intersperse them amongst your city. And that could be a huge challenge. I mean, that's probably the biggest challenge in the game to make a nice looking city with your production buildings in there and still achieve the various milestones that at least I set, like having a hundred thousand population, having, um, you know, reach the maximum amount for the tourism, reach, reach the maximum amount for the Skyline Tower, which is what I'm trying now. So I like setting, and the, the palace, for instance, an attraction. Now, that's difficult with with pollution and the various different things that are going to hinder you. Um, but anyway, relegating everything to this island, at least, trying to make it somewhat nice looking is in some ways therapeutic for me. Instead of just having paved, blank paved paving everywhere, throwing in some of those industrial crates, barrels, steel beams, things that make sense outside the buildings that they are, you know? I try to try to fit what we can next to the types of production they're next to, you know? And now with the sewers, the sewers are a pretty cool addition because you can just throw them around the back of the chemical plants and stuff like that, so that's kind of cool. Uh, but anyway, there's also a little bit of optimization in here. It's not just crazy mini-style beauty building. I, 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 I don't even know if I want to call it beauty building because I just don't feel like it really looks that good, ultimately. I'm, I'm working with, like, ten ornaments here. But even so, uh, there is a little bit of optimization going on, which we'll get to in just a moment over by the pigs. But we, I end up saving about 700 worker uh, workforce without hurting the economy at all. So it's great after like, you know, 10, 20 or, or 30 hours or, or episodes at least of playing the game and coming back to a place like this. It's like you just see all these different areas where you can save up a, a bunch. And I'll go through the docklands right after this and show just a little bit of what's changed. But there's there's room for way more. I mean, obviously, there's way more room for efficiency and optimization. But I just mean within the context of my campaign, not completely redoing everything, there's still a little bit of room for optimization and changing out. Uh, I think gold is the number one product here. Probably going to make that a tier two or maybe tier three and bring some other stuff up to the top, like gramophones, steam carriages, and the elevators. Because they're just vastly, like, it's it's hard to ignore them at this point in the campaign. They're very, very powerful. Right, so we're over by the chemical plants now. And two of these are actually offline. They're just built kind of temporarily because I know I'm probably going to use them in the future. And the first thing I want to do is just push back some of the power, push back some of the chemical plants, or all of them really. And then I built a big sewer at the back of them to make it look like, you know, they're flushing all their residue out into the, I don't know, off the island, I guess, into the sewers. And then just make sure these these things have like you know the various fire stations, lots of supply warehouses, so they're all good to go, and uh, all of that. So I didn't spend forever going through absolutely everything and paving everything. Um, so or not paving everything, but adding specific ornaments. I did just pave big sections as well because I'll get to them eventually, maybe for like um, doing a bit more intricate ornaments and stuff. But just. Laying it out temporarily kind of now for now. It's like, yeah, this is the layout. This is how it's going to be. And if I want to go back in later and throw down some of those uh, worker ornaments, we have, we have time to do that. Uh, but you may have just seen, I kind of glossed over it there or went through it very quickly. I just removed loads of the rendering works. So 
I don't know how many, maybe like, I think I had like eight and I got rid of six, something like that. So a lot of them were gone, not all, but almost all of them. Heavily reduced the amount of soap we made because I noticed that I didn't even realize, but I must have cut out soap from Docklands over time just because it really wasn't doing the job where I felt like it wasn't needed. So it turns out like all the islands are just like pretty much full of soap. And uh, I was able to cut that out because it was like a tier two, I think, good within Docklands for a long time. So that's going to be basically relegated out and uh, you free up a lot of workforce. You'll notice workers now have got 760 free just by getting rid of all those rendering works. And all of that soap wasn't, and tallow wasn't doing anything. It was just sitting there. Uh, and the workers are just sitting there in buildings that were basically either paused or the stuff was being thrown overboard somewhere, you know? Anyway, so that's freed up a lot of space. I actually had to put down another spectacle factory because uh, I was still a little short on glasses. And then I just changed things to gramophones to pick up the actual glass, you know, that's used in those. And uh, yeah, that's going to be pretty much it. So still some work to be done on the island, but just a bit more of a, an organization and a little bit of an optimization. And then I decided to destroy the town over at Rush uh, as we don't need those workers anymore. All right, ladies and gentlemen, not your traditional beauty building for sure, but more of an optimization, a bit more of a downsizing of some of the industry that we just no longer need. We're modernizing as the wheels of progress keep turning and the wheels of commerce and DLC keep getting churned out. Our products are becoming more and more valuable. So it seems like a lot of these parts of the industry are not that relevant, especially when it comes to the Docklands. So in between episodes, I've been focusing Docklands and changing things around a little bit and trying to specialize in some different goods. Now, I never specialized in gold or steel because it was optimal. I initially said I just thought it would be a cool industry to specialize in because I th think it is kind of cool having your Docklands be themed around gold. But it's definitely not what you should be doing, especially if you've got all the DLC. It certain seems like My the meta says money, from what I've heard or at least seen on YouTube thumbnails is that elevators are supposed to be extremely valuable in terms of their ratio. So I'm starting to build that up. I'm not necessarily going to have this at the top, though. I think I might go with gramophones at the top. Um, as we're getting kind of close to that, there's 2,000 tons of gramophones that we're going to have to shift in order to get to Tier 1. And that's because we actually produce a lot of excess of gramophones. So I thought, yeah, that makes sense then to try and specialize in that. And we might actually be able to just downsize the gold industry because it's not actually that useful for the economy other than I've been using it in Docklands. So the long and short of it is, is that glass is now coming in through our gramophones and we have about 138 tons of gramophones that we can give away. I'm giving away 137 or rather not giving them away, trading them. Um, and because of that we can bring in the glass, should be no problems there, should be plenty and if we can get this to tier 1 I know that I'll be able to, able to bring even more in in the future. We only need about 1200 glass by the way, I'm over overcompensating and then eventually we'll hit that storage cap and it'll kind of even itself out anyway. Anyway, that's just what I'm planning on specializing in. There's some things I've been noticing as well, like other parts of the industry isn't aren't really that relevant anymore, especially like this trade union buffing all of these pig farms. I mean, I could check it. I actually don't think I did check it, but agricultural products like pig 66, at least if we look at it in total, seems really high up there that we definitely don't need this area anymore. It's just largely redundant now at this stage in the game, in our economy. So a trade union like this, especially knowing me with my short influence supply, would certainly be more useful being powered to improve something along the lines of, again, penny farthings, right? Because penny farthings, for instance, we have this guy in there, Dario the Mechanical Engineer, improving bicycles and sewing machines. So the penny farthings and sewing machines. And he's providing us with extra gramophones, extra pocket watches, or we could just build an all-out gramophone area. That's just going to take in all those wood veneers, take in all that brass, and just start churning more of these things out, if we really wanted to, right? So, definitely thinking along those lines. There's only so much time in the day, though, in an episode, in the day, in between episodes. So, that's something I'm, I'm thinking about. Probably will get to it eventually, but not going to do it right now. What we're going to do today and get started with is over here. And as I said at the very beginning, oh, it looks like we are... So many like-minded huh. souls. That's interesting, because I did just get rid of a bunch of soap, and now we're after running out of it. Huh. Could have sworn I made sure we had enough. So let's find out what that is. Well, we do have enough. Let's get rid of Crown Farms. Still have enough. Hmm. What be going on there, then? So let me just check this really quickly. Let's throw out all my plans for the episode. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I redirected this route, so it's just doing things a little differently. Um... I gotta check where are we getting all that soap from. So soap, 
on Lusk is being produced six. And 12 is the total amount we're getting, which means I think it's Malahide that's probably producing the extra. Yeah, that's producing the other six. Right, so that's fairly simple then. Uh, basically, this ship... Well, just to make this quick, I'll probably change this around, but um, soap just needs to come in from... Actually, there is a route that does Malahide, so I can search the routes. Malahide. And let's just see. Could I add you onto here? Maybe this messy, complicated route. So Malahide and then dropping to the list. Yeah, let's just pick up soap here and just drop it off and toss overboard if you can't get rid of it. So that's fine. Just throw it onto that. That's fine. That's, that'll fix it. <laughs> just trust me. I was going to say that we're actually really stable uh, for population. I must have left the game running for a couple of hours and the population like never really fluctuated. So that must be, I must have drained what must have been something like 3000 soap that was sitting here. Cause that's so funny that we just ran out now um, as I've kind of gotten back into the episode, I suppose. But yeah, I've been keeping an eye on things and looking through the statistics and I'm like, yep, I pretty much checked every good and made sure that we're producing everything we need. If there's ever a shortfall or something, I think it's mostly down to trade routes at this point. Anyways, one of the things I wanted to do in this episode was fill the Skyline Tower. Now to do that, we have to make two more department stores, two more furniture stores, and three drug stores. Oh, it's a little bit more than I thought then, so it's seven. I thought it was only six. Each one of these now, how many do they require? They require the 240 artisans. So let me just find out how many artisans we're going to need then. So it's 240 by seven, and that's 1,680. So we gotta find ourselves 1,680 more artisans. Now we'll get some of them back when we supply soap back here. And of course we have this extra area now right here that we're building out even more artisans. So we're down to 26 out of 30. So we'll fill up a lot actually just by getting this number back. I think it'll go back up to about 100. But then yeah, ultimately we need 1600 more. So what we're gonna do is start getting some artisans over here on the island of Rush because people have asked for it. I do agree, I think it'd be nice. And now that it's definitely seems like it's gonna be a necessity, it's like, okay, yeah, we'll start upgrading and figuring out routes to get them their stuff. So let's go. So I thought I'd just do this now instead of doing it during a time lapse. It's similar to how we did it before. Uh, really just want to kind of dot them around. Some of the nicest houses here where they're like, they've only got a bridge leading into them. That's kind of cool to do. Near the variety theater, I think makes a lot of sense as well. These guys, maybe this could be a bit of an artisan walk as it leads up there. And then these guys are going to need a university, I think, unless the requirements are too high. 1,500? Hmm, we might might use it. I was thinking the university could go here, next to the garden and the hospital. It kind of makes sense. Uh, yeah, so let's see. Let's just keep the ones along the canal, I think, makes a lot of sense as well. Rush new city status. Boom. City. All right, sorry. <laughs> new city status. City. Yeah, looking nice, right? I think so. Don't think I've done anything too terrible with that. I think that might be enough, just like that. And then maybe... Well, it really depends. If I do put the university over here, I guess I'd want to see how far does that reach. And let's be real, they might not make it to university, depending. We could have more on swords. Because I did say that swords was going to fill up. I think canned goods and sewing machines are definitely doable. Whoops, sorry. Are definitely doable with an existing route that I have that does both. This one. Lusk to swords. It takes canned food, it takes sewing machines, and it takes rum up to these places. Uh, weirdly, might try and change this around a little bit. Let's go intermediate. Or consumer goods, sewing machines there, unload that, and make this canned food. Now I noticed that it's really low there, but it's super high, obviously, in swords. So seeing as this island's the smaller one, drop off here first. And then when they fill up, um, yeah, when that kind of fills up, 
How are the sewing machines doing, actually? Yeah, they're okay, too. So that should be alright. I just gotta check that we're making enough sewing machines. Might not be. Um, that's one of the only things now with the increase to this. It says we are. I'm hoping that's alright. Let's just turn off Crown Farms just to check. That's fine. Crown Farms is actually on the same route now that I think about it, so it should be okay. Uh, one thing I don't like here is that the houses are all the same, which is making them stick out like a sore thumb. So just shift them around a bit. And then you can always, if they are the same, you can always just rotate them also, change things. It in the open air, apparently. I can't believe it. Yeah, looking nice. It might make me change some of these things out here. I'll boost to that. I do wonder. I like um, in Crown Farms the middle area here where it's like groups of artisans and group groups of workers, but just really quick. Damn it, I keep misclicking things. Just really quickly, like looking back here, I'd like, ah, I don't know. I don't know. Sometimes it could just be to do with like the look of the houses, though, sometimes. It's like, because they might feel out of place. Like that actually looks a lot better to me now. Yeah, I'm much, more, I'm much more happy with that. So sometimes it's just a matter of like finding the right model. And then if that pedestrian pack or whatever the next one's called comes out where you can change the look of houses, who knows? Things might look a lot different, look a lot cooler. Now, while time is going by, I've actually prepared a list of comments that I got in the last episode that I've just been meaning to... There's just a few comments that I keep seeing and I keep forgetting to either address them in the episode or I replied to them and I feel like I get the same ones then from the same people or from different people, sorry. So I thought I'd just address it here while we're waiting on this number to kind of fix itself. Um, actually, we should just grow a bunch of workers here, a basic worker estate. And then I'll move them around. So we just need to fix that. Um, that workforce issue that we're having right now. Right, so we're short 500 workers because we just upgraded a bunch into artisans. Um, and then we're going to have another town hall here. And wanna, I, I was going to build this out to have way more workers. Initially, they were here, right? And I was going to move them, but I just ended up deleting them because I freed up like 500 workers during the time lapse. So I was like, oh, I can get rid of that town now. Uh, but of course, I do still need them. So we'll have to just do them here. Do these still have... Yeah, they've got market access and everything. So they should grow just fine. So while they're growing, I'll just speed up time just a little bit and answer some comments. So this one is from D Wolf. I'm so confused with this guy's accent. Sounds vaguely British, mostly American, with a splash of Irish. So I get questions about my accent all the time and uh, why it is the way it is. I don't know. I can only assume, so I lived in Ireland. I'm from Ireland, I'm Irish. I grew up in Ireland, I was born there and I lived there until I was 22 and I'm 29 now. Um, and I moved to England. Yeah, I moved to England when I was about 22, something like that. Something like that, maybe about 23, whatever, I don't know. Short. And uh, I've been here for about six years, so whatever whatever the math is on that. So my accent is a, is a hybrid of British, American, and Irish. Uh, it's funny, most people say the Irish is the one that's the most subdued out of all of those. And that's probably just because I lived in rural Ireland, Ireland right? So when I would go out, basically I was in a school with seven people in my class for, for my first 10 or 15 years of being a kid and then when I went into secondary school at the age of like 11 or 12 um, I was in a class of maybe 20 but in a, a relatively small ish school of like 600 and then I went to college down in the south of Ireland anyway long story short growing up in rural Ireland uh, being in a class of seven and then going home and living surrounded by fields and having like no friends living around you it basically meant like I was exposed to their accents, I guess, during the day, but when I would go home, I lived on my PlayStation and my PC. I was just playing games all the time and watching TV. And I used to just watch American TV shows like The King of Queens or Friends or whatever it might have been that was on the TV, you know? I didn't watch like Irish programs, I guess. And uh, then you're just exposed to a lot of video games. So constantly, and like Grand Theft Auto and everything, in my ears constantly was American accents. And my dad doesn't really have a particularly strong accent either. Um, so I guess I just that's just the way it is. My girlfriend, Rosie, has her own podcast called Blonde Summit, and you can hear her voice on there, and she sounds kind of like me as well, even though she only lived a, a little bit further down the road from me. Um, so she has the same thing, where she sounds basically American, because she, li she lived on TV, basically. 
And it's funny how that can really shape your accent as a kid. So I, th I think that's where it comes from. Anyway, thought I would answer that one. The next one is, I can't stop wondering why your street doesn't have electric poles. That's because there's an option in the game, in the gameplay section. If you scroll down uh, somewhere here, if you want to zoom out further, there's the increased camera distance. Uh, and then somewhere along here, I can't see it right now. Show electricity poles on or off. There you go. So it's just an option. Uh, when you have 870 million in savings, is propaganda still necessary? Yeah, so I've been using propaganda on the newspapers whenever we kind of need to. Not to save money. I'm not, you'll notice that I never use propaganda that's the one that gives me an income boost. I use propaganda to get rid of any negatives. So for instance, a lot of the one I try to get rid of is the one that happens where it says it's going to be a 10% increase to consumer goods. Because that means that like all your production chains are just going to go out of whack. Unless you're overproducing by 10%, for everything, something's going to fall short. So I always try to get rid of that one because it's a big pain in the butt. Not that it would matter. It's like, okay, my population would fall for a while. Big deal. I guess I just don't want that to happen. It's not the money that's the driving force behind the idea of doing that. It's just trying to keep a stable population. That's why my goal in the entire game is always just keep that number as relatively stable as I can. Um, please put a fence. This one is from Rush Padruga. Um, and he says... Please put a fence between the orchards and the houses. So I think this is probably referencing this area, I would assume. So I'll just show you what that looks like. Because I did actually try that and I don't think it looks as good. But I'll let you guys be the judge of it, I guess. So if I put a bright Work harvest fence here, for instance. Like this. We drag it out there. Actually, now it doesn't look that bad. But initially, when I first did it. Um, I didn't have this second layer. It was more just like this. And I remember thinking like, yeah, I don't know. That just doesn't look right. Because you can see this huge defining line between the grass. But actually, if we cover it up with grass the way I just had it there, maybe it looks a bit better. And this is still at 100%. So. Um, let's should I do that? Is that weird? don't know. So you could do that if you wanted to say that it's separated, but I don't know. I think I preferred it the way it was, if I'll be completely honest, guys. Yeah, I think I did. So, yeah, I did think about it. I tried it the very first time I did it. I was like, yeah, I'll do it that way. And then I just didn't think it looked as good. All right, if I keep our camera at the regular kind of thing. You can kind of hide that harsh line a little bit, but it's, it is still there. You can hide it better and better if you just keep stacking it with more and more orchards, and that way the orchards themselves cover the actual line. So what's going on? Is there a fire or something? Oh, yeah, there is. Big one. Let's just slow it down a bit. Where are the fire stations? They're over here, aren't they? Go, 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 go. Whoops. All right, the next one was uh, from Chris who says, any update on the Frostpunk videos? Bailing on it, or can you revert to an older state to try and salvage it? Do the next DLC, question mark. Uh, so I do have plans for more Let's Plays, but I don't have any plans to do more Frostpunk. And the reason I stopped doing one uh, the last autumn, we got to episode eight, and there was probably gonna be about 10 or 11. I was really close to the end. The epidemic spreads across your city. Does an illness as well? Have it from your cold, dead hands. That's out here. Ugh. It's constant problems. Why is this only happening now? I left the game running for ages and nothing happened. <laughs> Let's just leave it that there. That'll fix it. Uh, but yeah, anyway, for with regards to Frostpunk, uh, my game save bugged, right? So m some people might know this, but if you don't know, I like to always finish my series. I, I, I don't really do series based on views. It's great when things view well. And it definitely would prolong a series, but I'll always do the thing I set out to do. However, the game has a game-breaking bug where all my docs stop producing food five days before they're supposed to. Now, Frostpunk is a game where if it was one day, I might make it. Two days, probably not. Three, four, five, it's almost impossible. I'd say it is impossible. So I did look into it. I contacted 11-Bit Studios. They're really friendly with me, and I asked them if I could, we could I do anything about service. it. And they said to submit it. They said to submit a ticket to their bug tracking software and QA people, I guess. And I did, and 
it even like pinged me back to say that it was being looked into and stuff, but it, I don't think they're going to patch the game now, so it, it doesn't seem like there's a fix there. I looked into save editing, couldn't really find a way to do it, and I'm actually relatively proficient with that. Um, but yeah, short of redoing the entire series, trying to get everything back to the exact way I had it, um, it just doesn't seem likely that I'll be able to continue it. Like, I want to continue it. Obviously now, though, it's really late. To, it's very weird to now, like, months later, be like, hey, I'm back with episode 9. I mean, but I really don't like having a series that's just, like, unfinished on the channel. Um, so, yeah, just just know that I tried, and it just doesn't seem reasonable to be able to try and fix it on my own, basically. But if, And I looked up on Reddit, I asked the community, I did a bunch of things. Like, I really tried to see what I could do to fix it. Um, basically, it seemed like I'd have to play through the entire game again and try to get it back to the same spot, but I couldn't guarantee that the bug wouldn't happen again. So it's like, well, that's a big commitment, time commitment to do that, to not know if it'll even work. Um, so that's kind of why, ultimately, it, it didn't happen. How thrilling! A renowned personage has arrived. Right, so that should be enough. I think I'm two houses short, actually. We'll see how that goes as these guys grow. Gonna put more strain on everything. How are the what houses the doing? So they've now got canned walls. food and sewing machines as well. So hopefully this is... The trade network will be able to keep up with this. Uh, so the next comment I had was, You should get Lady Baines, believer of protectionism. And put her in the Harbour Master office of Tabarine. I think a few people actually mentioned that. And that was to stop me constantly having to go back and buy back my shares. Now the thing is, he seems to swap islands. He's, I mean, he's, he's sticking with Tabarine for now. And another person did say, like, it, it might only happen on two islands. So if you could just protect those ones, it might not happen at all. Uh, which could be true. It could be based on the value that the AI is willing to spend. And maybe they won't do it on any, anything else. He was doing it on some of the Arctic um, glaciers. Ultimately, I just don't have the influence to put down a harbor master just to stop someone from having to make me click a button every now and then. It's just not really that worth it. Um, if I had the excess influence, I would do it, but I don't. So I don't really mind. You know, sometimes this goes all the way up to um, all the way up to full, and then you'll hear the announcer guy say like, "Hey, he could buy out your island now next time." So, so that's a big enough warning where I don't think that's going to happen by accident. Uh, to, I don't think so anyway. <laughs> Uh, and I've got the money to just keep buying it back, so I don't, I don't really mind, uh, ultimately. Um, got a couple more comments to go through. You should start the event for the World's Fair. It's a guarantee that you'll get one positive news in the newspaper. Always something to think about. So I actually never knew that. That's quite an interesting one. Uh, and that came from Hut, SZSZ. So we could just run a World's Fair for fun, for fun anyway. Let's do uh, Science and Innovation. Yeah, we have everything. It's a bit of a strain on cigars, I guess, but it's all good. There we go. The workers are getting a lot happier. We've got an excess. We're starting to get our excess in artisans as well, which is cool. Although we're going to need way more than that. I guess in this episode, I really need stacks of workers I'm sure of it. if we're going to upgrade them all. And then obviously I'll make this look nicer in the future. Maybe in the next episode or something. I can't add left. All right, so we'll see how much of a strain that puts on everything. Fish is okay, clothes should be fine. But it all depends on stuff like canned food, really. We bring, we bring it in through Docklands, so no doubt it's going to need a bit of an increase. Um, but it does mean in the interim we can Sherry start... Atop our beautiful friendship cake. Yes, they're still missing that soap, actually. <gasps> so, soap. The epidemic left buildings abandoned. Ah, oh, you'll be fine. Don't worry about it. So our soap is going to go into the island of Rush first. And once that island fills up, then it'll start spilling back over into um, swords. And it'll be fine then. So we're just kind of waiting for that to happen. And it's the same with the... It was the same with the sewing machines. It's like we're giving the attention to the smaller island first, because that'll fill up first. And then it'll pass all the excess into the bigger island. Now, the bigger island has more of a demand and more of a problem if it runs short. But it seems to make sense doing it this way. Just fill up the one that has a smaller storage. 
and then all the excess just goes into the bigger island. And when you've got enough, according to statistics, it should be fine. Um, so the next comment I got was, you could use the closed bridges. So this is from Magic Monkey. You could use the closed bridges from the harbor decoration pack as a mouth of your channels on rush. Placed parallel to the coastline, somewhere in somewhere where the lighthouse is placed right now. I think there was a regular channel dash bridge side by side to the harbor fake bridge too. I've seen it somewhere else. It looks really kind of real. Now this one confused me a bit because they, the person you saw it from might have been using a mod because he's re referring to this ornament here, right? The open bridge. And I think I think he's saying to put it across a channel, right? Uh, what I would assume he meant is a canal. If that's the case, I don't know. You can't do that. These can only work out on the sea. Um, so I'm not too sure how you could have done that. Let me just check it over here, like, for instance. Just as an example, something like that. Because it's only got a one gap. Yeah, it's, it's not going to work. Now, maybe I read this wrong. He did say placed parallel to the coastline. Like, parallel to the coastline. And then, what, have a, a thing go like that, is it? But see, it doesn't go any further. This only operates on key, like on the thing that's a key and not on road. So road is here, this is road, and then it's coast. So because of that, I don't know, I don't think you can make that work. It might have been a mod if you saw that, that made this ornament work inland, because um, there are mods that do that. Thank you for the comment. And then the final comment I have is Kleiner Prinz Tork. And he says, why do you only load 35 glasses on the ships with fur coats? However, unload 50 in swords. Uh, so let's have a look at where I'm doing that. Now, my trade reads aren't the most efficient. So I'm not necessarily a guide or giving advice on how to do trade reads. Many people in the comments will tell you that. Um, so what was it specifically? It was glasses. Uh-huh. So it was 35 pocket watches and unloading 50 um, because it doesn't matter. Essentially, you can say as long as you're loading something, you can just always say just unload. This means just empty, just empty everything, right? I guess you could say 35 if you wanted to. It wouldn't make any difference. It's just more effort to go into that and type it instead of just going. Well, it was 50 before. That's why. So, for instance, this was initially 50. And then I clicked a button to make it 50. Then I was like, you know what? Actually, I only need about 35 going here. So I hit accept. And I just never changed the bottom because it doesn't matter. It's going to unload 35. It'll try to unload 50, but there's only 35, so it's fine. Um, the reason I lowered it to 35 was because I need... I'm only producing a very fine amount. We're still making more than we need, but only by slightly. So I'm actually just dividing it up before it gets to where it needs to go. So I'm picking up less. Um... In reality, if you just pick up the full amount, eventually you'll uh, deliver some back to the islands. But the storage caps are so big now. I've got like 3,000 storage over in Cape Trelawney. I've got 3,000 storage here in swords on this island. So it's like you need... It would require me to fill up the first island of 3,000 and then this one would start filling up. And I just don't have the patience to wait that long. Um, whereas it's quite the opposite with the other thing I just did, which is I'm going to let this one fill up first and then the excess will go into here because the storage is only 700 there. So I don't know if that makes sense, but that's, that's kind of why. So I know I focused a lot on comments there. I just thought I would address them because it's been a lot and those are just some reoccurring ones I see quite often. So, and I don't mind, obviously leave some comments. If you've got questions, I'll answer, try answer them in the, go. try answer them in the next um, episode. So here's an example of where I don't need to use any propaganda. We have 10 happiness, negative five. So that's fine. And how's that um, World's Fair going? It's on. It's ongoing right now. Nice. We're up to ninety-seven thousand as it currently stands, which is good. Let's just do some more upgrades here for who can take it. There we go. Bunch of more workers. How are you doing for um? They're just a bit low on some things. Alright, it's just a quick and dirty job. I'll relocate and change things later. But really, I should have left I should have left the town down there. I just wasn't thinking ahead like that. Um, but now we have 960 artisans. So we needed 1,680. So we're getting there, for sure. S albeit slowly but surely. So let's um, pop down that... 
Again, I don't think I'll even need it, though, will I? I'll need fur coats, which we do have on the island. You need 900 for that. Okay, let's get to the fur coats, then. Where does that house have a road? Oh, there. Nice. Looking good. Is that 900 now? Yes, it is. So it says no supply. I thought it just said that we had some on the island. Did I read that wrong? Uh... Oh, apparently I did. I must have been reading the amount of population required for it. Okay, that's fine. Well, fur coats, I think we've got plenty of as well. That That is probably the most infuriating bug in the game, is that the text box stops working sometimes. Anyways, um, so fur coats is going from lusk up to swords in two big batches. <clears throat> um, so I'm going to tell you to... This is, see, this is getting so messy now, I really need to redo these routes. But yeah, I'll tell you to... You can pick that up again, but drop it there if you can. Do you need anything else? I don't think so. question is, are you even going to ever pick that up? Maybe. That's the only fur coats we deal with. Hmm. I wonder how many we produce on Cape Trelawney and never do anything with. A lot. 16 tons of them are made and only 9 are consumed and we never bring them back. Hmm. It seems like we need to. Let's go Cape and Old World. So things that come come to and from Cape Trelawney will be, for instance, here. Sewing machines are picked up at Lusk, brought out, and then dumped, and jewelry is bought, brought back. Let's tell them to bring back some fur coats. And that'll fix it. <laughs> it's getting messy out there. All right, we're up to 355 workers at the moment, 1,164 artisans. When the fur coats start getting delivered, we might just make a manual delivery to kind of kickstart that population a bit. And then we'll just start going ahead and start building the um, department stores. And then we can have a look at what we're going to need to actually supply all of them about the best I can take, to be honest. So let's just bring that up now. On our way. Okay. All right. With 1,172 artisans, that's plenty. Let's get over here and start cranking out. I'm just going to put them down really anywhere. It doesn't really matter at this point because um, this place is going to be changed so much. So I'll just do them out in the old estates somewhere out here. And then I'll figure out where they go later. I just really wanted to be able to say, like, can we get this done and can I sustain it? And then we can start building the town. Um, so what was it? What do we need There's specifically? No one that isn't looking up to me now. I might write this down. So Except birds, perhaps. perhaps we need vacuum cleaners and briefcases. So vacuum and briefcase. And that's for the department store. So let's just do that one first. Just set up two of those. So we have our drug store, we have the furniture store, and then the department store. So two of these. Customers are seeking goods, but we have naught to offer. So a vacuum cleaner is gonna require wool, celluloid, and steel. And it's going to reduce the consumption of glasses by 25% though. Ah, I didn't re even realize that they need to be powered. Um, hmm. Don't know how I can deal with that actually. So our power plant is all the way over there. There's a tiny bit of space for power here. Not the best though. But yeah, we might, might even start moving some of these out as well. I guess actually another thing we can do is just crown them in here.
So that's the first one. Between empty shelves, so I steel is fine. Celluloid actually Church. should be on the island. Yeah. Stop talking to me. They should be on the island, and wool is on the island at the moment. So that's for vacuum cleaners. And then the other one is going to be briefcases. And I imagine it's going to be like Imbesin Sanga Cow, is it? Yeah, Sanga Cow, brass, and again, celluloid. So I'll have to see if we can crank that in over here somewhere. Is that going to fit? It will if I cut the road. Oh no, it won't actually. If I cut the road there, it will. Okay. All right, and the nice thing about this is it's going to be reducing a lot of the goods we need as well, just as a passing thing. This is going to reduce leather boots and cigars, actually. So that's good. Cigars is always a bit tight. Um, but that means we need to now set up... So I might start manufacturing ships. I forgot to do that. And making some new traders that are going to deal with supplying all of the... Because these department stores, they have very particularly small amounts of goods that they need. So I think it'd be good I'll just to have ships trying. that do that. Let's just make three ships. And that's three influence inch each, so that brings us back down to 20. Okay, anyway, sorry, I feel like I've been a bit scattered. Hopefully, though, things are kind of making sense a little bit. And then let's just pop down a warehouse here. Does it fit? Oh, it just about doesn't, actually. Now, remember, this area is just going to obviously change. So the plan the plan is, is... Why can't I drag that out? There we go. The plan is basically, once we get the High Life Tower fully maxed out and built up to 4,005 people, then I can start saying, okay, right, the last job of this campaign, really, or this entire playthrough is going to be to build a nice layout here for the investors and then move a lot of the artisans out to here and have a sort of a tourism and shopping districts and stuff like that. Um, that's the plan, anyway. Don't know... You know, I like, I like this tourism here, but who knows? Might even move that. I'm probably going to redo a lot and move a lot of stuff around. But generally speaking, I still like the engineer area and the... Everything on this side of the river, I think, is pretty good to go, except for, like, if we cross here. It's all just this bottom half that we can, like, reconfigure. I like this area, too, as well. 48 seconds to go on that. Population's good. No major fluctuations. No major fluctuations in terms of, like, investors or engineers are dying out, or not dying out, but leaving. And then coming back. So that's all stable. So that's nice to see. Uh, okay. So the next thing we can do to have a look is... While we're waiting on those ships to get built, see what else we need then. So we're going to need bed frames and lounge seating. Okay. So it's the two DLC items, actually. So one of them, I think, requires gas. Which is uh, going to be a big strain. I don't know how we can... I mean, ultimately, I'm just going to have to sacrifice power somewhere, it feels like. Because, yeah, I can't really make any more gas right now. That'd be such a nightmare to try and figure that out the, in um, the Arctic, because I was, like, struggling Finally to do that anyway. What do we get? So, furniture store, we'll just pop um, two of them down. Just somewhere like here. So, do they both have power? An empty arcade fulfills no purpose. So, it's going to be cherry wood, bear fur, and goose feathers. Now, goose feathers you can bring in through dock ones. And then lounge seating. Wands of timber, sanga cow, and wool again. And that's going to reduce pocket watches and telephones. So, that's interesting because that one you could have maybe out here. Soft surrounding. We'll leave that out there for those guys. Reduce the consumption of telephones. Do they consume pocket watches? Now this, this is what I crossed. No, the they do consume gramophones. Gramophones, though. I didn't remember that. 
And this is going to reduce glasses again and light bulbs. Oh, wow. That's actually really good. Reducing, reducing glasses by like 45% with the two of them combined. It's pretty damn good. Um, so do they have everything they need on the island? They don't have goose feathers or bear fur. Let me just check Docklands. Does bear fur come in through there? No, but feathers does. So the bear fur, we might be able to figure out. Goose feathers, we can get something to bring it in here and probably send it to the Arctic to free up the workforce we're going to need to get more you bear fur. The so they can work together. Uh, okay, and then the next... So what's that population-wise? So we have 200 artisans left. In this wow, gentleman. loud music. Am I quite content? So they're fine. Let's just get some more artisans out here then. And how are they doing? Have they grown yet from the fur coats? They have, actually. So with another 400, they'll actually get to university status and be able to go all the way up to 30. It's another 330, so we can build at least another one here. I kind of see this episode as like a preparation. It's like we're just slamming down buildings, and then I'm kind of going to figure it all out in the next one with trade routes and production chains and stuff like that. So hopefully people don't mind. And like I said, I wanted to address a lot of the uh, comments that have been getting about different things. So drug stores is next. <clears throat> Actually, there's no power out there. I might just keep... Whoops. I might just um, place it back over there. At least there's power out here, and we could change this around a little bit. These are obviously placeholder. Plan on having these museums dotted around the city. One's a timber. To the so, store. We are happy to hear your complaints. soap, sugar, and coal. Well, that's actually not for what we need. We need. Let's see. I actually don't know what we need. I'm assuming pomade. A all the all pomade. the things that are probably DLC. Yeah. So pomade and detergent. Did I forget one of these? Oh, it was six in the end. I must have just run out of something before. That's kind of curious. Maybe. Unless I'm confused. I don't know. Anyway, detergent and pomade. So we have the pomade. Uh, we just need detergent and then that's it. Now, how far does power go down here? Wow, it goes the whole way. That's pretty good. Oh, it's because it's in the city, in the thing as well, isn't it? Yep. All right, detergent. So that'd be all 15. It's just whether or not we can sustain that for the workforce and for the goods, obviously, that are coming in. But that, that would mean we've done all 15 buildings and these guys would grow, if we could fill all these things, up to 4,000. Now, we don't get anything if they do grow that much. I still get the 50 influence. I don't think the influence goes any higher. I, I haven't looked it up, so I don't know. It'd be awesome if it did, because it is a thousand more <laughs> investors, basically, that we're crabbing in there. Um, but I just thought, I don't like having any buildings that aren't full, unless they're just capped, you know, like they have that lock symbol, because it's like, oh, they haven't hit this threshold. So that's fine by me. But I want everyone to grow to the max of their potential. Um, so yeah, it's just a matter of delivering on things. Okay, so... What would one, what would be a relatively easy one to kind of handle? The celluloid one is interesting. So just looking at the global statistics now as an intermediate. Oh, my mouse is doing that thing where it's kind of glitching now. I don't know if it's coming across in the recording, but that means the game for me is slowing down. There does seem to be some sort of memory leak. Uh, yeah, so celluloid is short by about two tons, which means it's just one building short. So maybe we could get that up and running. Now that's done in the new world, isn't it? Just to double check, but I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So in the new world... I'll keep it under my cloak. Celluloid. So that's more ethanol, more camphor wax, and more cotton. Now these are things we've actually all just improved recently. So I could switch this from chewing gum to celluloid. and build the second chewing gum place out here where we built one in the last episode. And I think that'll be okay. 
The yeah, I was gonna say the cinnamon might be rough though. Uh, I need to set a reserve because we're taking it away. I think. So let me just check then. Okay, well, like cinnamon, are you? How are you doing globally? Uh, we're actually overproducing it, so that's that's pretty good. Uh, and I'll just check it on the trade routes then, just to see like, well, is it making it here? Ship constructed. In the new world, we are picking up cinnamon at Marbella, picking it up at Guadalmina if we can, and then dropping it at Puerto Venus. But really, what we need to do is also pick it up there and also drop it off. I don't know if it's even being consumed at Puerto Venus, but some of it goes back to the old world. So this way, it's gonna just drop off what it can and pick it back up to the to whatever its limit is. So if I set a limit of 100, it's never going to take more than that, so that should fix it, I think. It's a bit of a weird way of doing it, but I, it's worked out for me in the past. Um, as long as we have some sort of limit here. Alright, we'll see how that goes. So that should keep the... I should keep the chewing gum level the same. Uh, and caoutchouc gets delivered here and everything, so that's fine. Sugar gets made here, and so does cinnamon, so that's all good. So this should keep going once the cinnamon kind of builds up here a bit. I reckon I could make you cry like a... And then chewing gum will come back. The only other thing, then, is celluloid. So it seems like we have enough. Um, do we have a route taking it to swords itself? Uh, yes, we do. Oh, no, we don't. It goes into Lusk, but it doesn't actually go to the town itself. So that's where I'm going to need to make new trade routes. So that ship is done now. So I'll have trade route, old world, the island of Lusk, to swords. First thing we'll just pick up as the first point of contact is going to be that celluloid. And then drop it off. Our new ship will do it. Actually, yeah, I've got two ships. I forgot about that. The mosquito is free now as well. Don't worry about this. This was from something else. I just ended up not needing it. We do produce a huge excess of violins, though. All right, anyway, so that's back on its route. It should just go and pick up celluloid and start delivering that. And then we'll add other things to it. And we'll call the route, like, you know, something to do with supplying maybe all the department stores and something to supply all the furniture stores. Maybe. I'll see what I can combine up. Um because wool is going to be needed to deliver it here, but steel, I think, is being delivered here for various different reasons. What was this one needing? It needed this, and it needs Sanga Cow. So you know what? Actually, I think we've got Sanga Cow down there. Only reporting in. I'm just going to tell it to come back really quickly. Now we can do two birds with one stone, just on our first run here. This is, it always confuses me, the Sanga Cow. We do produce way more than we need, yet it doesn't seem like there's that much on this island. Um, let me just look globally, like, why why is that? Thirty-six to thirty-five. Oh, I guess it's not as high as I remember, or I thought. How much workforce do we have? Forty-three. Well, we've got room for more. And these are the Sanga There's farms. Tea by the door if you want to. There's tea by the door. Uh, 300%. From the silo, is it? 100%. Oh, and then the irrigation's another 100. Oh, yeah. Cool. Hmm. far out can it go? Oh wow, it's pretty forgiving actually. I know it looks awful. Again, I'll change it though in the future. I'm just trying to get things to work first. And to be honest, we can have another one of these. It's only 20. That's mad that that counts. I can't believe that. That's halfway out the circle, pretty much. And that one can't be done. I don't get it. Oh, because of the coast? Huh. 
<laughs> That's like the worst building I've ever done in my life. That's awesome. <laughs> oh, I'll get back to it. I know one of them's not covered, by the way. It's fine. Um, it's just to have more. All we need to do is have a, a surplus. That's fine. Yeah, potential is 40. The thing is, though, really, it's just Tabarine that gets its stuff taken away. Um, oh my god, I can't find anything. There it is, Tabarine, and then I want to check maybe Swords. Because that's the stuff that actually comes back. So yeah, it's fine. So what's your problem? You're full. Full up. Totally full. So that's the, that's the real issue, isn't it? And base it to the old world. How much are you bring it in? Just 50. 150 at a time. On the three ships. Should be fine. I think so, anyway. If not, we'll have to just make some ships dedicated to doing some of these higher production items. The ones that are starting to make... Like, these yeah, trade routes kind of made sense before, but... They're, they're making less and less sense now when goods are starting to be made at, like, 50 tons a minute, you know? It's like, well, you can't just bring 50 on the ship then, can you? Because it's just not enough. Artisan's looking good. Slightly low, but not too bad. So that should be... What was wrong with that route, by the way? It said there's something wrong with it. Oh, you're just not moving it. There you go. Off you go. All right, so once that comes in, that means that we're going to have our briefcases. We're going to have our vacuum cleaners. And that'll give us... So let's see what that'll just immediately give us. It's going to give us a 25% reduction in the consumption of glasses for all of these guys. And this is going to give us a new... Oh, I hate when he says that. Uh, this is going to give us a 20% reduction of leather boots, which isn't consumed by these guys here, but a 10% reduction of cigars. Now, the cigars one is actually more beneficial to me than the leather boots anyway. They don't consume cigars, do they? No. They do have clay pipes, though, of course. Preppy little scholars. What about these guys? You need ethanol. Ethanol? And you've got salt pepper. Okay, you can make detergent quite easily as well, actually. Let's get some ethanol up in here. Ethanol we way overproduce, so I don't even need to check that. So on the second trip, we'll get that. Uh, this one, then, is going to need the versatile camphor wax, the beeswax, and hibiscus petals. That's a more tricky one. We'll do that in the next episode, I think. This one also needs sangha which we're fixing, and ones of timber. Ones of timber. I think we can bring that in through the Docklands. How thrilling! A renowned personage. No, I guess not. Thought we could. Interesting. We can get regular timber. All right. In that case, then it will have to be brought up from Embesa, and I don't think we do that. Let me just type in timber. No, well, maybe. No. Okay, yeah, that's another problem for another day. Um, also, why are you short on bus routes? You just need another bus connection, dude. There you go. And is that it, then? That'll be it, right? So these are the two boss battles that I have. Beeswax, camphor wax, hibiscus petals, ones of timber, more sanga cow. And that's it. Oh, no, no, no. That's the real boss battle. <laughs> the bear fur. Yeah, bear fur and goose feathers. Now, goose feathers we can bring in, but bear fur, that's a nasty one for sure because I think so anyway. Let's see. It'd be amazing if I overproduced it already. No, I don't. Yeah, I, I didn't think I did. <laughs> Just sometimes you have to hold out, for, hold out hope for something like that. So here we are, King William Island. Um... Bears, beats, you know the rest. So there it is. 40 explorers doing their thing on the Shift hunting cabin. Now, the interesting thing here is if we do bring in goose feathers via uh, Docklands, we can get rid of any, uh, any goose feathers that we have here. Where is it? Out here? Out here? I don't remember where I built it. I built it on a small island. I think it was this one. This one, yeah. So unfortunately, damn, so it's not it's not going to work out that well because while there are goose feathers here and we do use them, there's no bear fertility here. I could forest as a fertility. No, I guess because these ones don't have that. Hmm. 
I was saying, I was thinking I could change the actual we'll fertility. For instance, caribou abundance. Do we even use that here? That's a permanent change, though, I think. I don't think you can ever change that back. No. Oh, so that's interesting. So if I changed caribou to bear abundance... Oh, maybe it's not per uh, permanent. You might be able to change it back. I actually don't know. I've never used it. But if we did change it to bear... Uh, actually, I think I've used it once. I think so. Anyway. If we do change it to bear, that means I can get rid of all the goose thing here. So that's 35 explorers, another 35, and then... Another 35 and another 35. So that's a bunch. That's like, I don't know, what, 140 or something like that? 150 maybe? 150 that can then be working on getting extra bear fur, and we'll send that back. So this requires five more workers than it otherwise would. And it requires free space, though. That's the real issue. So it would have to be built out like there. Another one built out like here. And then do they need to be warm? Probably, right? Ugh. <laughs> well, at least they've got an idea of what to do. I think that's a good good way to approach it. There's bear fur here, and there's 105 free workers. So, maybe we could just slam it down right now? Do you need heat? I actually don't think you do. Oh, no, you do. No, you don't. <laughs> oh, Lord. 100% would be there. The heat doesn't make it up that far, though. What would happen if I was just to, right now, just change this around? Your people are miserable. Are they miserable now? Still? Uh, kind of. This house doesn't have anything, Is and neither does this one. Out? But I don't need them, do I? don't really need that workforce. So I think this actually works. Everyone has their heat, right? Mm-hmm. This has its heat now, and that's at 98%. There we go, 100. Nice, the heat extends even just to there. So that's 100 now for it. I mean, that's a little bit extra. It might not still be enough, though, because we were short anyway, but it might actually correct the shortfall. So it's a start. <laughs> no, it didn't even do that. Well, it's close. Closer, but it's not good enough. Uh, plus, a ship will need to come here and pick that up anyway. So I have to write that down. Bear fur. So yeah, so that's something I think I'll do in the next episode, is try to sort out the... I'll, I'll start doing a bit of a trade. Not a complete overhaul, but start optimizing my trade routes and going through them a bit more. And then the next episode, figuring out... Uh, how can we sustain these and then doing a bit more beauty building on rush to add all these give all these new houses a lovely home make them feel like home uh, and it looks like we can afford to pop down a few extra artisans like I said before you know as we build this area out I can probably space these a bit more you know like downgrade some of them back into workers and then sprinkle them amongst the workers out this way so I think that look a bit better uh, maybe just temporarily here just give them the the boost they need just to complete the set and complete the workforce so yeah so anyway that's the situation a bit of a disjointed episode i feel like i don't know but at least we've got a plan going into the next one and it's kind of exciting knowing now that all of these areas are going to start becoming operational i guess there's only really three or maybe four that look like they'll actually be challenging it's really just the ones that are in the Arctic and in in Ambesa that looks like, oh man, that's going to be tough to like fix that. Um, I also have to count how many we have on the island. Maybe I'll just do that really quickly right now. Because it should be 5, 5, and 5. I might have doubled up on some of the same things though. So that's 5 there. Yeah, so we've got 2 making toothpaste. So for instance, we could get rid of one of those. If we really were just set on hitting, you know, the max amount of investors here. And what are they going up to? Look at that number. There it is. Trickling all on up. So we've completely done department stores, furniture stores, and then detergent is just filled up right now. Look at that. Loving it. Detergent was down here. And that's because they just got their ethanol. It's pretty good. That's going to reduce consumption of gramophones and steam carges. Now these guys all consume gramophones. So that's actually not bad. Having them in there covering all these guys would be pretty good. 
Let's just um, toss that there. Feed that in there. Oh, I just destroyed one of the buildings. There goes 90 influence. Just your casual 90 influence. Whatever, it doesn't matter. Gods of the Delta is what we're looking for. Alright, there we go. Alright guys, that is going to be it for this episode. Feeling good, making big progress. I know it might not feel like it, but look at that money situation now. 419,000, 98,000, as we're after gaining another two, one or 2,000 now in the... Uh, well, really, we've only gained about 400 in here, but we've gained about 1,000 new artisans, right? We said we needed 1,600 more, and we've pretty much done that. And then what I'm going to be doing is getting rid of that second toothpaste, wherever it is. I think there's toothpaste somewhere along here? So yeah, getting, anyway, I don't know where it is. Getting rid of that toothpaste, and that way it's going to be 5.5 five and 5.15, and then we'll max out the Skyline Tower, work on that in the next episode, and then we can finally start building out the area to try and think of, okay, where is a good place to put these things to keep them, like, optimally consuming less? Now, as this place grows more, it consumes more and more stuff, so that's obviously a worry as well. Um, but that's the situation. Let's just really quickly... I can't end this episode, can I? Let's just have a look at the Docklands and see, has that been holding up all right? I think it has been. I'm liking these numbers. Yep, everything looking good to me. In fact, too good. And then our export volume is now at 5324. So it's going to take a little while longer before we get ground phones to number one, but it'll happen. Alright guys, that's going to be it. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Hey guys, thank you very much for watching, and remember, if you want to support this series directly, you can click the Join button to become a channel member. Doing so will get your name in the credits, as well as loyalty badges and emotes to use in the comments. If you don't see the Join button, it means the video has been copyright claimed, but you can still join from the channel page on desktop. You can also link your account to our Discord to get a special role on there that will give you access to the Senate House and a few other perks.